So changing, a wire, changing the wire in your machine, a very important thing to know how to do or when you run out of wire you're not going to know what to do. So we're going to show you how to change the wire. I'm going to be adding some uh, gas metal arc welding wire. This is for backing gas. As you can see I have my cylinder hooked up to my Millermatic 141. We're going to get it all connected and we're going to show you exactly how to do it to make it a seamless, uh, easy process for you. Really the only tool you're going to need to put your wire in is a good pair of pliers with some wire cutters on them. So these are my welding pliers. Uh, even if you have some needle nose pliers, just as long as you get cut the wire, you're going to need uh, a smooth end, a nice clean cut end as you feed the wire through the machine. So this is really the only thing you're going to need to run the wire through your machine. One of the first things you're going to want to check, this is the roller inside of a welder. As you can see, I have 0 0 0 0.030, 0 0.035, 0 0.030, 0 0.035, 0 0.024. So that's just the different wire diameters. This roll or spool that I'm putting on this welder is a 0 0.030. So I just want to make sure that my wire roller is adjusted to my welding wire diameter. So we're going to show you how to do that, but that's really important to pay attention to because if you put a smaller diameter, for instance this 0.024 wire in, and you have it set on the 0.035, it's not going to run very good. So that's one thing that you definitely want to pay attention to. And uh, a pretty common mistake uh, at least for my guys at my shop, sometimes newer guys come in and say, hey, my welder isn't running too well. And the first thing I check is to make sure that those rollers are where they need to be because that makes a big difference in how it's going to weld. So here's a close up of the machine. My roller goes on right here. All you do is push it on. Every welder is a little bit different. Um, some of my big welders, they have a different way of doing it, and the small welders obviously have a different way of doing it. But you're going to want to push it in and twist it. And wherever it lands on here is where it needs to go for this welder. So I'm going to adjust it to the 0 .035, 030 wire. And that's where it's going to go, right there. So that this machine's pretty simple. So let's go ahead and start adding some wire in. So first and foremost, you're going to want to get it all prepped and ready to start loading. So you're going to want to get everything loosened up, get any bolts or clamps or anything off this roller and then you're going to be ready to set the new spool of wire on. So today I'm going to be putting a 10 pound spool of wire on. One thing to definitely pay attention to, I always find out where this wire, the direction it's running. So in this specific welder, one thing that you really want to pay attention to, the right now how I have it set is the wire is going to run off here into there and that's going to be important because this real wheel goes this way and it's going to feed through right there. Some welders go the opposite way. My bigger welder it goes through the bottom and feeds through the bottom so when you put the wheel on you're just going to want to pay attention to what direction the wire is coming out of this roll and how you're going to need to set it in that welder. So mine's running high, so I find the wire and I set it on accordingly. If your wire's down lower, all you do is flip the wheel over and you'll get that opposite reaction. So now as it feeds, it's going to feed through the bottom. But like I said, this one's running through the top. So what I like to do is just set the wheel on 
and know where my end is. This is the end of the wire here. So I'm going to put everything on because you definitely, any bolts or clamps or anything, you want to make sure that it's on because you definitely don't want that wire falling off. Um, I've dropped one before <laughs> and the wire actually broke and exploded and I had a major bird's nest and it was no fun. So let me grab my welding pliers. What you're going to want to do, I always hold on to my wire. I find the, the end of the wire up here and I hold on to it and I wiggle this piece out right here. Get it out. Flux core wire is a little bit easier to work with on loading the wire sometimes, at least taking it out. So there's the end. This is why you're going to want these wire snips. So you're going to want to cut this end because you need a good clean end to run through the welder. If I put the rough end through, you're going to have a hard time getting it through your welder and through your liner. So then I'm going to feed it through the welder or these rollers here. So you're going to want to push it through, push it through. There's two different ends that it has to go through. I got it through there. You're going to want to get it all the way through the rollers and then what I personally do is I close, I close this clamp and then that holds it for you. Um, you're never going to want to let go of this wire before it gets in or else it's just going to spin the wire and it's going to come all unwound and then you're going to have to get a new spool of wire. So that's kind of the rough breakdown of how that works. It's really simple, really easy. You kind of get the hang of it after you do it a couple times. The first time's a little tricky, but other than that, it's very simple, nothing too crazy. And now we're gonna run the wire actually through the machine itself. So what you're gonna want to do before you start feeding this wire through is you're going to want to take off your nozzle and your tip. Most of the time I leave my diffuser on because the liner runs right up to the diffuser. So I normally leave that on there. And then you turn your, your machine on. So power on. And then what I like to do is I turn my wire speed up as high as it could go. And another very important thing, you're not going to want to run your wire through with any kinks or any twists in your line. You're gonna to wanna to straighten this line out and get that liner nice and straight, like so. And then you're gonna to wanna to start feeding the wire through. So this miller starts off a little slow and then it goes fast as you saw there. And then you're going to want to pay attention to that wheel because sometimes it could get bound up and you don't want it to um, break the wire and then make it make the wheel come all unwound. So that went really fast. Some of the longer leads take a little bit longer. As you can see here it came right out and it went very easily. That's why it's important to clip this end and make sure that it's a good clean cut because going through that liner, if this is jagged at all, it's not gonna get through that liner very easy. So you're gonna wanna make sure that that's cut nice and smooth. And like I said, that one went through very easily and it was because I had a good clean cut. So then you're gonna wanna put your contact tip and your nozzle back on Twist that on there. And this is just a push on nozzle, just like so. And I'm ready to weld. So very simple, pretty easy process. And yeah, we're ready to weld now.